we meet the Lord of the Impossible in one of the most dramatic miracles of the Old Testament, the Exodus and the opening of the Red Sea. The people are trapped by the sea. They see Pharaoh in hot pursuit. Imagine the panic they felt. See the courage displayed by Moses. But most of all, feel the power exposed by the Lord. Hear the reading of the scripture. Exodus 14, verses 10 through 18. And as Pharaoh drew near, the sons of Israel looked, and behold, they saw Pharaoh and the Egyptians marching after them, and they were very frightened. So the sons of Israel cried out to the Lord. And then they said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us in this way, bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we said to you in Egypt? saying, Leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not fear. Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which will be displayed for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you will never see again forever. The Lord will fight for you if you keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Say to the sons of Israel, Go forward. And then the Lord said to Moses, Lift up your hand. Lift up your rod. Stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the sons of Israel will go through the midst of the sea on dry land. And as for me, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they will go in after them. And I will be honored through the Pharaoh and his armies, through his chariots and his horsemen, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. I pray that God will add the power of his Holy Spirit to this reading of his Holy Word and help us to understand how that event applies to our life today and gives us courage in the impossibilities we face. Let us pray. Almighty God, Lord of the impossible, we face impossibilities all of the time. Life leads us into cul-de-sacs of impossibility. It seems like there is no way out. And yet, Lord, in that very moment, you are preparing a plan to extricate us from our difficulty. Give us courage to know that you are indeed able to act, that you are all-powerful, and that the only things which can hurt us are the things that we refuse to trust to you. We trust you, Lord. Our hearts are open. Speak, Lord. Show us the way. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. The man looked me in the eye intently. He said, what you're asking me to do is impossible. I smiled and said, go for it with grace and gusto. The man was facing a situation that on the basis of human analysis was absolutely impossible. Finally, after reviewing all of the impossible parts of it, he surrendered the problem to God and trusted him. Nothing happened for several weeks. And then, at the midnight hour of crisis, 
God broke through and did for the man something he could never have done for himself. God provided a way through and a way out. God is the extricator. When we trust him unreservedly, he does for us what we could not do for ourselves. He is the Lord of the impossible. You know, the longer I live in the school of faith and listen intently and empathetically to others, the more I realize that there are times that God allows circumstances, opportunities, challenges, problems, and perplexities which to us appear impossible because he wants to display his power and engender in us the gift of faith. Oswald Chambers said, Acts like these are a platform for the display of the grace and power of God. We never forget them. We look back with memory and forward with courage. What is it for you right now? What is that thing in your life that you call impossible? Who is that person who is impossible for you? What complexity brings you to the end of yourself, crying out, I can't pull it off. It's impossible. What is it? Focus that in your mind as we look at God's great miracle of the Old Testament, the Exodus and the opening of the Red Sea. In preparation for it, God had to get Moses ready and then the people of Israel. Two events were interrelated, the burning bush and the opening of the Red Sea. In the Midian Desert, God appeared to Moses and revealed to him that he was a God who could make things happen. From within the burning bush, God spoke and said, I am that I am. It's the causative verb to be in Hebrew. It means, I will be what I will be. I will make happen what I will make happen. I am. And with that triumphant power pulsating within Moses, he went back to Egypt and there told the people that God had heard their groanings in their servitude and that he was going to lead them out of Egypt to a promised land. And then he went to the Pharaoh and said, let my people go. Well, when we attempt the impossible, we can never expect the actual accolades of people. <laughs> As a matter of fact, all progress climbs over the backs of the recalcitrance and resistance of people. The people of Israel were not very happy about leaving the known for an unknown. You see, over those 430 years, they had become people of bondage, not only to the Egyptians, but to their own fears. The Pharaoh was not ready to release his slave force, and so he resisted Moses. Finally, the Lord had to make it so uncomfortable for the people of Israel in Egypt that they wanted to leave. And with the plagues, he made life so excruciating that the Pharaoh wanted to get rid of those people. And then they began the exodus. They left 600,000 men, along with their families, making a total of about two million people. They left Egypt, trusting God, expectant of what he would do. It's interesting to look at the maps and trace the progress of the Exodus. They moved from Ramses down to Succoth, and from Succoth over to Etham at the top of the Bitter Lakes. And then they actually went out into the area of the wilderness of Shur. And then the Lord gave them an instruction which led them into an impossibility. Listen carefully now as I describe this. The Lord moved them back out of the wilderness, around the Bitter Lakes, down to Pehaheroth, which means meadows, 
down to Migdol, and then down to Baal Zephon, right beside the Red Sea, which was called the Sea of Reeds, or in Hebrew, Yum Suf. Do you see what happened? There was a mountain range just by Baal Zephon, where the god of the north was worshipped. Migdol was an outpost of the Egyptians. The Egyptians, under the leadership of the pharaoh, were moving across Pihahiroth, the meadow. They were like a bird in a cage, a mouse in a trap. There was no way to move. They could not move south because of the mountains, nor north because of Migdol, nor west because of the approaching of Pharaoh, and certainly not east because of the Red Sea. Actually, there's a protruding area at the top of what was then the Red Sea. It was almost like a dock-like, finger-shaped protrusion out into the Red Sea, and I believe that the people crowded out into that and then around. And they waited. And it was then that they discovered that they had to trust God. Now, don't miss the point. God actually allowed it to happen. Put that into your faith. Because allowing it to happen, he alone could be the solution. Now, what the people said to God and then said to Moses, and then Moses said to them, and then God said to Moses and then to the people, gives us the basic steps for what to do in the midst of an impossible situation. No wonder the people were filled with panic. <laughs> they cried out to God, as if to say, God, what are you doing? We followed you. You see, God had given them a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. And they had followed obediently. When the pillar moved forward, they moved forward. When it went back, they moved back. When it was standing still, they stood still. And they followed, and God got them into a jam, a trap. No wonder they cried out to God. And then they cried out to Moses, Listen, Moses, is it that there were not enough graves in Egypt that you had to bring us out here to the wilderness to bury us? Didn't we tell you to leave us alone? We want to serve the Egyptians. It's better to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But then, you see, Moses was given the opening to declare his courage and faith. He said, do not fear. Stand by. Actually, in the Hebrew, it means take your stand and see the salvation of the Lord which he will perform for you today. For the Egyptians which you see today, you will never see again. All you have to do is let the Lord fight for you and be silent. Well, we don't know what Moses said to God. His prayer is not recorded. But what the Lord said to Moses is a challenging admonition. He said, why are you crying out to me? Tell the sons of Israel, go forward. And then he described the strategy of the opening of the Red Sea. Moses was to take his staff, stretch it out over the water. The waters would divide. The ground beneath would be made hard. The people of Israel would pass through. And the Lord would harden the hearts of the Egyptians. They would go in after them and the Lord would cause the waters to cover over them. And that's exactly what happened. It became the metaphor of the might of God. All of the Old Testament looks back to it. It's at that point that God displayed that I am means that he can do what he says. But in the interchange between the people Moses and God and the people and Moses, we get five things that we are to do in the midst of an impossible situation. The first is fear not. Fear is just a hair's breadth off of faith. 
the same emotional channel through which fear flows, faith can flow. And faith is a gift. Often in an impossible situation, the thing we need to say to God is this. Listen, God, I'm afraid. I feel it. I'm encompassed by it. Take that away, and in its place, put faith. It's faith that enables us to stand firm, stand by, to take our stand. There are times when it's best not to take a step, not to make important decisions. I've found in my own life that there are times when it's important to stay where I am, stand still, and listen. And it's in those times that God speaks and proclaims his word. The next instruction was to see the salvation of the Lord. That meant not only a retrospective, but a prospective look based on what God would do. When they looked back, they should have realized that God was taking care of them each step of the way. And he would open that sea, and from that point on, they would have a metaphor of his might in order to encourage them. It's true with us. We look back not only to the opening of the sea, but we look back to Calvary. When God opened the way so that sinners and failures and uptight, frustrated, worried people like you and me can pass through into an intimate relationship with him. See the salvation of the Lord. All that he's done is but a prelude of what he is going to do. But once we see the salvation of the Lord, we need to be still. Moses said, watch the Lord fight for you. A man called me recently and he said, once I turned my problem over to God, he led me into the place where all I needed to do was applaud what he was doing. We are to be applauders, never to run ahead of God, never to lag behind, never to push him, but allow him to do what he wants to do according to his timing. And then the Lord said to Moses, tell the people of Israel, go forward. <laughs> it must have been something for them to put their foot in that sand and know that it had become hard. And they passed through. And the Lord then hardened the heart of the Egyptians. They went in after them, and the Egyptians were defeated. The soul's only movement is forward. We are called forward to follow the Lord where he leads us. What does this say to you right now? God is faithful. He's leading you in the midst of that impossible situation. And at the right moment, he's going to open that sea and let you through. We say in the words of the poem, forward, but whither shall we go? The desert is on either side, behind the Egyptian foe. Before us, the interposing tide, yet we thy command obey. Our road impossible pursue. The ocean opens up its way and lets thy people through. And it will today for you. God never forsakes, he never is gone. So count on his presence in darkness and dawn. Only believe, only believe. All things are possible, only believe.